It's Jungler on the stage for chat. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Great cast on the day. I am joined by Crumbs from Renegades in their first win. They obviously have nothing else to do today because they didn't worry about wasting time. They're an hour <laughs> you guys had. What were you thinking the whole yeah. time? How does it feel to get a win with the first team well, here on the internet, on know, the stage? At first, we were pretty glad that the game was going to our pace, getting the dives, getting the turrets. But then we realized, OK, it's Jan and Victor. They're just going to stall out the game forever. And I think we could have closed out a little better. But we're mostly preoccupied with just getting that win and try to make, you know, put on a good show as bad as it sounds. Like, we just want to get that win. And the eventually, you know, move up in the ranks. So what was the communication like at the beginning? It was back and forth. Uh, we had a lot of Alistar, Callista plays, the Fates calls going in. It seemed like the bot lane always wants to fight. Is that kind of the Renegades model? You guys are always going in and always trying to find something? Well, I thought at first the comms were actually really great throughout the game because usually nobody, like, the communication is mostly between me and Maria, but now everybody was stepping up. Like, Freeze was talking so much as he has that engaged opportunity with the Callisto, and it was really great. It made a huge difference, as you could tell, with how many good ults they got off. But we were calm throughout the whole time, to be honest. Like, when things went wrong, we mostly identified, all right, why did they go wrong? What do we have to do next? And mostly it was just managing the flash timers of, of the enemy as well as how we want to engage on them, because I get, their plan was just to stall. Yeah. I want to touch on that freeze point. Is it, was it that freeze is usually not as loud, or he kind of just spoke up more this game and you guys were able to work around oh, it? Oh, no. He's usually, he usually is pretty loud and, and vocal, but not as almost commanding. I'd say. Like assertive. He, yeah, not as, yeah, yeah, exactly. Not as assertive as, as I'd expect. But it was really great. You know, he really did a good job today. All right, Crowns, I got a final question for you. You guys head off, and you kind of watch the replay of that. It'll be a long one. Who are you guys looking at now? You've seen a few teams play today. We got one more game between two. Who you got your eyes on? I have no idea, to be honest. Everybody's hyping up all the teams just based off of scrim results. But to be honest, that doesn't mean anything. Like, scrims are worthless. So all, all that matters is how you play on stage. And so far, it seems like everyone's kind of on an even playing field, to be honest. So I'm, I'm kind of excited for the season so far and see who can get out of this neck and neck race. All right, well, congrats on the first win, and best of luck tomorrow in your Thank games. You. Right now, we're going to throw it the analyst desk to break down some more. Thank you very much, Riv. I mean, what a back-and-forth game. They just don't want to give us short games here in NA in Week 1. But we are going to take a moment to jump back into one of the final fights. Not the very last one, the second-to-last fight in that game, just because we need to take another look at this craziness that happened back and forth, left and right, all over the map. So we're going to pull that up and roll it out for you guys. We'll talk over it a little bit. Yeah, we just need some time to process this. Once again, Freeze and Remy making this combo, but boom, right on to Piglet. And when there's two damage dealers on a team and you're able to take out one, well, you know, you don't need a mathematician to figure that out. And then also, if you look at the minimap, Victor. Victor is chasing, chasing around Crumbs right now. Phoenix is running off to the side. Crumbs gets away, but then Crumbs starts coming back. And now Victor starts coming back. And then they have to go back and forth. So off on the side, there's kind of a Benny Hill moment with the other damage dealer that's left alive. So then you basically left two tanks, two damage dealers, to deal with only tanks. Right. So this was basically just Piglet misposition, and also Phoenix with a little tunnel vision afterwards, too. Right. To be fair, the, the Smoothie Ultimate came in, immediately almost knocked Remy just out of range for the ball, the Orianna Ultimate to hit, but it still did, yeah. zeroed him out. That led to two inhib kills, which stalled. It didn't end the game quite yet. Crumbs came back, had that huge smite steal. We saw the resulting fight in Baron. That ends the game. But now it's time to go back and break down this 60-minute-plus game that just happened from the very beginning. I want to look at Freeze in particular in the early game building quite a CS advantage over Piglet while grouping with the team for the turret pushes and Piglet in the solo lane. Yeah, Freeze almost hit about 100 CS per minute pre-10 minutes, and he was doing a fantastic job just picking up this farm, even in the lane swap. So they were just giving it over to him, making sure that he was having a good time. Then when he got back to the lane, you realize that this is a combination with Freeze and Remy, where they're going to take every opportunity they can get. And I think that this bottom lane is slightly overlooked with all of the great acquisitions that we're seeing that have kind of uh, accolades behind them, right? Double lift yellow star. We're seeing Afro Mu have Stix A alongside him now, Wild Turtle and Adrian. And this is a, com a combo that's extremely aggressive. Every time they saw an opportunity, they were using the catapult and throwing them in to try and make a play. I see Freeze and Remy as a combination that's going to try and make their own advantage. We talk so much about how AD carries are beneficiaries of their team, how they, if their team's doing well, they're gonna do well. Well, this is a combination that's going to make their team do well. Right. And I think this is really cool to see. 
because he's not just going to sit back and let the game happen. Yeah, no shortage of aggression between the two of them, and I'm really excited to see them in a 2v2 matchup if that ever comes across because we've seen them in the lane swap, and then we saw how they did utilize that Callista ult with the Alistair to make picks, blow flashes, and gain advantages around the map. But what happens when you put them in a 2v2 scenario and they start running at your face and you're very used to being a more passive bot lane with your, AD, or with your support? Yeah, it definitely means that you have to start thinking more about pulling your jungler down and this applies so much pressure which applies which makes more opportunities for your jungler and i want to transition to vision here because crumbs bought a sight stone early on a jet was talking about it and then alex and rf both held on to their yellow trinkets the entire game right so they were prioritizing vision on this squad because they think vision is power every time i talk to crumbs he's just like you know you need vision and i mean i guess i guess it's fitting for the profit but yeah. <laughs> the vision helps him win games so if you're applying pressure bot you can get these deeper wards on the opposite side of the map you can get deeper wards on that side of the map wherever you see the the enemy jungler go to the opposite side and you have an opportunity so that makes you have these types of options and this bottom lane just opens things yeah, up. Yeah, it's a really interesting discussion around sacrificing essentially combat stats by going for that uh, sidestone. Because you could pick up the trackers and be fine with yeah. that, not build the sidestone, and then immediately start building into a dead man's plate or, you know, whatever it is that you want. Instead, he's choosing to place uh, to put the money into the wards, even upgrades to the red oh, yeah. to the red side, the I, ruby sidestone for those mo at more actives on his no other actives. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> it's, it's just for that extra ward and some HP, but it's how he likes to play League of Legends and the fact that he's able to uh, have that style work for him right. is really cool. Because when Crumbs actually left Dignitas, it was all about the fact that his team didn't really listen to him and they wanted to play League of Legends in a different way, right? right. They wanted to be aggressive. And he was like, well, I want to get the vision first and then make these plays instead of have a high risk, high reward thing go down. And Differing. now he's able to do that. Exactly. Differing philosophies, and this seems to work out for him. I want to jump into our final replay 30 minutes into the game around the Dragon Pit because we did, throughout the game, you and I were saying to each other, we just want to see Team Liquid pull the trigger on something. Lorlo, get in there, throw the ultimate out, and then have the damage follow up. The problem is that consistently throughout the game, we would see a play like this made. Oh. Yes, finally, he jumped in, he ulted, but the Phoenix damage didn't follow immediately and freeze with a beautiful Ooh. QSS to get himself out of that, uh, that laser damage. Yeah, that was the key part right there, is freeze with the instant QSS against the wall and the walk backwards instead of doing an auto attack because the laser from Victor immediately follows him up and if Phoenix had flash laser but he didn't really see that coming the QSS was really smooth on Freeze's part right and this is that kind of thing where we talk about Team Liquid they had some roster changes in the offseason we're not sure you know how much they're meshing together and it did seem every time Lorlo had multiple good ults and there was the one mm -hmm. time up on, around the Baron Pit that we did see it capitalize on three man stun Victor ult Victor laser just killed all three of them when it does work, it worked very well, but there were multiple times aside from that that it just wasn't quite hitting in the milliseconds that it needed to, and it, it afforded Renegades the opportunity to turn it around. Yeah, I think that Lorlo, I was just sitting here going, pull the trigger, just flash, throw them into the wall to the right, just get two people and it's fine. And it felt like he kept waiting for the perfect one mm -hmm. too many times, and you can't hold it that long. And then it got to the point later on where they were poking him down and they were just like, we're going to make your Meganar go off. And right. he felt the need to jump in and try to go for whatever he could then. And I felt like that was an instinct he needed a little bit earlier. Yeah, final thing, I just want to take a moment to appreciate the amount of damage, and I believe you wrote the numbers yeah. down, that came out of the Victor and the Lucian as compared to Callista and Oriana and how it kind of illustrates the point that total damage dealt doesn't necessarily illustrate the, the fact that you would win or yeah, should win exactly jat was talking about it on broadcast where both have two damage dealers well the damage out of team liquid a hundred and ten thousand damage out of just those two champions just those two just victor and lucian and then if you look over at renegade side 72,000 damage out of just callista and oriana so they basically did 150 percent of those two damage dealers damage on liquid side with those two so that's huge right and yeah. what it speaks to is that when renegades did pull the trigger the damage that they had was effective we saw it in that fight where they zeroed out piglet immediately right so the damage they're dealing is actually working towards the kill not just poking out and then resetting fights with yeah. Mo you know, Mo mundo was regening yeah. up there's a, a lot of damage amount. there's a lot of hp to do damage too so that'll pad your stats a little bit right but exactly yeah. but an interesting statistic nonetheless there's still one more game coming your way with echo fox taking on team 
Impulse. The 2016 spring split continues in just a bit. We are getting ourselves into the rift as Renegades takes on Team Liquid. They're going in for a dive. 4v3 on a smoothie right away, and nothing he can do. First blood for freeze. Okay, nothing did. Nice, nice ult. Nice ult. Okay. And they ult. They should break cool. it that right now. Holds it out. A big combo comes in. A couple of knockups. Alex Sitch could go down. Flashes of safety for now. Finally taken out by I will dominate. But a big pull for us comes through from Remy. We can keep Good on job. slow chasing. Slow chasing. Okay. Nice, 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 Go, Glista, 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 Glista. Nice. Okay, go down mid, go down mid. Yes. Oh, he's clearly. Oh, shit, sorry. They're going to find Piglet. They found Piglet. A shot wave catches him. And he's gone. Renegades takes down Piglet. Now, can they do the rest? Good, they can get it. Oh, Grub! Gets the spike and in 61 minutes, Renegades 1-0.